Today I'm going to show you how to analyze this, one of the first trusses people ever work through in physics or engineering. Now I'm going to show you how to solve for the reaction forces on the truss, the forces in each of the beams that make up the truss. Then we're going to identify whether each beam is under tension or compression. Now this truss is the first truss that most people ever see. It's just five beams connected at four different joints and it's loaded rather conveniently right in the middle of the truss. So diving right into it, the first thing we're going to do is solve for the reaction forces at each of these supports. Or to put it a different way, we're going to look at how hard each of these supports is having to push up on this truss in order to keep the truss stationary. Now in some trusses, solving for the reaction forces can be a bit complicated, but because this truss is loaded right in the middle, the load winds up getting split evenly between the two supports, which means there's 50 newtons of force upward by each support. The whole idea there being that if there's 100 newtons of force acting downward on the truss, then there must be a total of 100 newtons acting upward on the truss in order to keep the truss from moving vertically. Now if this load was off center, then finding the reaction forces would be a bit more complicated, but let's save that for another day. With this first truss, we're just trying to keep things as simple as possible. Now the next step in analyzing this truss is solving for the forces in each of these beams. And to do that, we're going to use something called the method of joints. You see, the method of joints takes a look at all the forces acting on each individual joint. And those forces can be produced either by the beams that make up the truss, the supports that are holding up the truss, or the load itself. Now we're going to apply the method of joints to each of the joints in this truss. And the question always comes up, well, uh, which joint should we begin? Well, the fact of the matter is, you can typically start either at either of the supports or the load. So today, let's start over here at joint A. You see, the method of joints boils down to one simple idea, and that is that the net force on a joint in any axis must add up to zero. That is to say, all the forces acting on this joint vertically must add up to zero, and all the forces acting on this joint horizontally must add up to zero. Now there's three things which are acting on this joint right here. There's these two beams as well as the support. Now we already know the support is pushing up with a force of 50 newtons, which means something must be pushing down on this joint with a force of 50 newtons. Now there's a rule anytime you're solving trusses, and that is that any individual beam can either push on a joint or pull on a joint, but it can't produce any torque. That is to say, this beam right here, beam AB, can either push down to the left on this joint or pull up and to the right on this joint, but it can't act straight down on the joint. In a similar manner, AC can either act horizontally to the right or horizontally to the left on this joint, but it can't act vertically. So going back to the idea that the total force on this joint in the y-axis must add up to zero, that means something has to be pushing down on this joint. Well, since AC is a horizontal beam, it can't be beam AC pushing down. That means AB must be pushing down with a force of 50 newtons. And the only way for beam AB to be pushing downward is for the beam to actually be producing a force down and to the left. And really all we have now is a right triangle. Now given the dimensions of this truss, we know this angle right here is 33.7 degrees which means this angle right here is also 33.7 degrees. So going back to right triangle trig, knowing the opposite side of this triangle, as well as the angle, we can solve for the hypotenuse, that is the force produced by beam AB. So setting 50 equal to the force in AB multiplied by the sine of 33.7, we find the force in AB is 90.1 newtons. And knowing the force in AB, we can now solve for the force in AC. You see, since AB is pushing down and to the left on this joint, that means AC has to be pulling to the right on the joint in order to keep the joint from moving horizontally. So solving for the horizontal or adjacent side of this right triangle is going to give us not only the horizontal component of AB, it's going to tell us how hard AC is having to pull back to the right. And we find the force in beam AC is 75 newtons. Now the next important rule when solving trusses is that whatever force acts on one end of a beam, like this 90.1 newton force, is also going to act on the other end of the beam, but in the opposite direction. So if there's a force down and to the left on one end of beam AB, 
there's going to be a force of equal magnitude but opposite direction on the other end of beam AB. And the same thing's true for beam AC. Now it's at this point that we again have a choice. We can either choose to apply the method of joints up here at joint B or down here at joint C. So let's take a look right here at C because things are already pretty well worked out for us. You see there's one beam coming in vertically to joint C here. The other two beams are acting horizontally, which means the only beam that can act vertically on this joint right here is BC. So if there's 100 newtons of load downward on this joint, that means beam BC must be acting upward with a force of 100 newtons. Remember, these other two beams can't act vertically on this joint. They're just horizontal beams. And because beam AC is pulling to the left on this joint C with 75 newtons of force, and BC is acting vertically, meaning it can't act horizontally on this joint, that means beam CD must also have a force of 75 newtons in it. So we now know the force in four of the five beams that make up this truss, the only unknown being BD. Now BD acts on two different joints, and we can look at either joint in order to solve for the force in BD. So looking over here at joint D, since beam CD is pulling to the left with a force of 75 newtons, the force by BD must be acting to the right with the same force. And since this support over here is pushing up with a force of 50 newtons, BD must be acting down with 50 newtons of force. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we can solve for the force in beam BD. And we find the force in beam BD is the same 90 newtons that were in beam AB. And that shouldn't be a huge surprise since this truss is symmetric between the left and right side. The forces on the left side of the truss should mirror the forces on the right side of the truss. And realize, really all we've done at each joint here is drawn a free body diagram showing all the forces acting on that particular joint. Now to understand tension versus compression, let's take a look at two springs. You see this spring right here we can push on or compress. And when we push on the spring to compress it, the spring itself is pushing outward trying to go back to its original length. And this other spring we can stretch or put it under tension. And when we stretch that spring it again is trying to go back to its original length. But because it's under tension, or really trying to get shorter, it's pulling inward toward the middle of the spring. Now the same idea can be extended to the beams within a truss. You see, if a beam is pulling on a joint inward toward the middle of that beam, we say that beam is under tension. And if a beam like this one right here is pushing on a joint, trying to move two joints ultimately farther away from each other, we say that beam is under compression. Meaning these bottom beams, both of which are pulling inward towards their centers, are under tension. And these diagonal beams are ultimately under compression. And a good way to remember the difference between tension and compression is that if we can replace a beam like this, BC, with a cable and still have the truss work, then that beam is under tension because it's pulling and a cable can only pull. So this has been how to analyze the first of what is hopefully many trusses that you'll see. And on that note, that's all for now.